What's up YouTube? I'm famous now, I've got 10 subscribers. What a better way of celebrating this massive audience other than creating a new video about making art in JavaScript. This is the type of pictures that we're going to create with this video. It's a grid of cubes, they get progressively displaced and subdivide as they go up in the y direction. You're going to find the code for this project on my repo, I'll post a link in the description of the video where you can grab the source code and play with it on your own. So without further ado, let's get into it. We'll use the same identical setup of the last video, we'll kickstart the project with Vite, you'll choose vanilla JavaScript and then get these dependencies so we'll be good to go. For the most part, I'm using free files, style the CSS, where we're just centering the canvas, index.html, standard boilerplate, and main.js, where all of the magic happens. We'll import a bunch of stuff, then create a 3JS scene with an orthographic camera, a standard render with a resolution of 800 pixels, we'll set a background to a scene, we'll start rendering, and then we'll run the project with npm run dev. If all went well, we're going to see a very unattractive empty brown square at the center of the screen, that's okay, it means that everything went fine and now we can start adding lines to the project and make it a little bit more interesting. We create a reference for the free basis vectors for the x, y, and z axis, then a line material. Hey, you might ask, why a line material though? We're rendering cubes. Well, it's true, we're going to add cubes to the scene, but for each face of the cube, we'll draw all the lines that create a face. Each face will then be rotated depending on the face because we have right, back, left, bottom and top faces. And we're also saving a reference to the normal because this is the face that points forward. So we already know by default that the normal of this face is this one. And then we're going to rotate these vertices depending on which face we're computing and also rotate the normal. We'll finally scale and translate all the vertices that make up this face, then create the geometry of the line and add it to the scene. As a final step, I'm going to add a cube at the center of the screen and the scale of this cube will be 100 pixel. Right, this is a little more interesting than what we had before, but it looks more like a square rather than a cube and that's because we're looking at it as a, in, from a front facing angle. So what we'll do next is apply a random rotation to this cube such that we can see it as a 3D object. That's going to be super easy, I'm going to add a random axis that we'll use to rotate the cube on, then a random angle and I was also forgetting to specify the Z position of the cube, if I don't do that it's going to get clipped on the near plane of the scene. Then we'll have to pick our vertices and the normal and rotate them by the random axis and random angle that we're specifying. Alright, this is much better. Now, a cool addition that we could add to the project at this stage is to change the material of the back facing lines and make them appear dashed and with a color that is dimmer compared to the color of the front facing faces. We'll split our material in two, one for front and another one for back facing lines. Then we'll check if this is a back facing face by checking the dot product of the normal with the z direction. And if this face is at the front, we'll draw it with the front material. Otherwise, we're going to draw it with the back material. And we'll also have to translate the geometry one unit down in the z direction to avoid drawing back facing lines on top of front facing ones. There we go, and I will have a lovely distinction between front facing quads and back facing ones which will be drawn with a different material. In my last video I said that in generative art when things are not interesting enough you just have to wrap them around a bunch of for loops and they might become interesting. And this is exactly what we're going to do here to subdivide the faces of the cube. We'll need the size and position of the cell that we're computing and then we'll have to scale and translate the vertices of the face to match the size and position of the cell. Finally I'm setting the subdivisions parameter with a number between 1 and 4. That's the end result. This is pretty cool but we can do better by also displacing the position of each of these cells with a noise function. Here is the noise function and an additional noise scale parameter. The noise inputs depend on the face, the position of the cell and also the position of the cube itself. We can move these inside the for each loop of the vertices and also let the input depend on the, ver on the position of the vertices themselves. But in that case, all of the vertices of the face would be displaced with noise and I think that from an aesthetical perspective I did prefer to keep the faces as squares. And finally we can add the noise to displace the vertices in the x and y direction. Now, remember, at this stage we're dealing with these vertices. They haven't been scaled, nor translated, nor rotated at this stage yet. So the noise that we're adding, it will displace the vertices that are defined like this here. So if 
if the cube is rotated, the vertices will be displaced along the normal of the plane of the face and not displaced randomly in the 3D world because we're applying this step here before rotating the vertices. Now look at that. This is super, super cool. Now the last step will be to actually create a grid of these cubes and let them be displaced by a specific noise function that changes depending on the position of the cube on the grid that we are going to generate. And here is a 5x5 five five grid of cubes where the scale and noise scale parameters also depend on a noise function. The noise scale and subdivisions count will increase with the x and y directions, so cubes that appear at the top right of the screen will be more subdivided and more displaced than cubes that appear at the bottom left side of the screen. Almost looks like we're done, but we're missing a very important piece of the puzzle. Can you guess what that is? Well, we're missing the random red cube. Yes, yes, that's, that's really important. We'll need a new parameter to determine if this is the red cube or not, and we'll just choose a random cube out of the ones that will be generated. Then we'll need a new material, and we'll use the new material on the front facing faces if this is indeed the red cube. And we'll add the last piece of logic for this project. One time out of four, we're going to use a huge amount of noise when displacing the faces. And now we're finally, finally done. I hope you enjoyed this project. I would love to see your variations of this concept. And look at how much this one exploded. Uh, that's pretty cool. So if you happen to play with the algorithm, please share your results and I hope to see you again on the next one. Cheers.